Wisconsin Foodie would like to thank the following underwriters for their support. When I first became organic, the big crop then was these Vinton 81 soybeans. It's a high protein bean designed specifically for tofu. Well, one thing you like to see is pods all the way to the top to the bottom, and, and we have that. The Vinton variety of soybeans is a very tall bean. You can see it's over waist high. A lot of soybeans are only half the, the height of a Vinton. I like that cracking noise. This one's got two beans in the pod but they're really nice, big, big yellow, clear hilum bean. Very, really, really nice. Just a very plain tasting bean. It's got a chewy texture to it. It's a little hard too. It's fresh, fresh soybean seed. You can't get any fresher than this and it smells really good. A sweet smell to it. I don't know, I can't, it just smells like nature, something fresh, you know, something you'd want to eat. <laughs> My farm is 117 acres total. The amount of land I dedicate towards soybeans depends on the crop rotation. So last year, for instance, I had 35 acres of soybeans. This year I only have 16 because things are rotating and it just depends on what fields open up at what time. So the farm's almost been in our family for hundred years and uh, I started in 1990 and did corn and um, oats and hay and uh, I did that for 10 years until the year 2000 and then I converted my farm to organic production uh, specifically for soybeans. I not only got certified in the United States but I also got certified for what they call Japanese agricultural standards. By I want to say like 1995 that whole market fell apart. I think the Chinese flooded Japan with, with soybeans so they quit buying. By the late 2000s uh, as far as I know I was the only person growing Vinton 81 soybeans anymore. My brother, he was reading a, a magazine and they interviewed RJ from The Simple Soyman and in this article he said that he really preferred Vinton soybeans but he couldn't find them anywhere. And so he gave me the article and he said, well, you, you might want to talk to this guy. So I did, I uh, found his phone number and I called him up and uh, RJ didn't answer the phone but one of his employees did. I said, well I have Vinton soybeans, I was, I'd be interested in buying them. And the employee was like, heck yeah, we'll buy those. And, I'll have them call you and I thought, well, that's the kind of enthusiasm I like to hear on a phone call and, and um, so that's where our relationship began and he's a small tofu producer and from what he's told me, uh, all these big players are coming into tofu production, competing against him and I don't know if they are as particular as RJ is about the beans they are using. So a big company may just go for mass volume and maybe it doesn't have the same qualities as a Vinton, but RJ seems to be a little bit more particular about the bean he's buying. He wants what he figures is the best or feels is the best. We're in Milwaukee's Sherman Park neighborhood today and we're gonna take a behind the scenes look at Wisconsin's largest and only tofu producer, Simple Soy Man. This soy is, is fantastic because it, it has a story that's rooted in Wisconsin. The beans are grown here and it's sold mainly within the state. I'm really excited that RJ and Barb have opened the doors to us and hopefully we can go in and learn a little something about the tofu making process and take some back to the cafe and, and put together some amazing food that represents their love and care. Hey, Luke! Hey! Come in, welcome to Simple Slamming. Thank you so much. This is, uh, this is great. I've never actually been in a tofu processing uh, facility before. Why Milwaukee and, and why, why this neighborhood? What does this mean for you? Well, we live in, in the Sherman Park neighborhood and our business is here also. We're really happy to be providing jobs in the city and creating really good food. So this is where all of this takes place. What do I need to do to... Let's get your hairnet. Awesome. How do I look? 
like you're part of the team. All right, I'll follow you. All right, come on in. So this is the kitchen where we make tofu. Wow. All right, so I have to assume that the tofu process starts with the beans. That's right. The first thing we do is pour beans into barrels and then soak them overnight. How many pounds of beans does, does this barrel hold right now? That's about 100 pounds of beans. Okay. How much tofu does one barrel of beans produce? Well, it's about 120 to 140 pounds of tofu. That's incredible. And the water, like as we're in here, water is an essential part of this process, right? Very. We use a lot of water. You yes. use a lot of water. Mm -hmm. So, Milwaukee. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's one of the reasons we're located in Milwaukee. Well, Milwaukee's my hometown, but besides that, there's, we have an excellent water filtration system here. Sure. I gotta assume if you're, if you're spending money for high quality soybeans to make the best tofu product possible, having high quality water is absolutely essential as well. So we have this drill. <laughs> this is a drill? A drill that we put on uh, with the bean stir. Awesome. And it goes around. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Can I try it? Oh, sure. <laughs> That's awesome. I feel like a little kid in a toy store. Is it is it possible to like over agitate the beans? I'm not I'm not ruining the process, am no, I? Not. Okay. <laughs> uh, now they've been soaked and agitated and rinsed. W what comes next? Well, the beans get drained and then measured out and ground. Okay. Okay, great. You walk us through it? Sure. Great. We come over here to do the grinding. Okay. And this is my partner and husband, RJ. Hey, RJ. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. It's good to see you again. Uh, do you want to do the handshake? There, yeah. <laughs> the virtual handshake. I'll just wash the plate. Yeah. RJ, one of the questions that I have is, uh, why, why tofu? I like to refer to myself as a uh, ecological vegetarian. And I'm, I'm a vegetarian because of the land usage that it takes to grow the food when it becomes meat. Sure. And so we were looking for something to provide a good source of protein with less impact on, on the environment. Yeah. So what I'm doing right now is I'm spraying this, getting it ready for the transfer through our extractor. And that's the machine that you are standing next to. It's spinning and forcing the milk out of the ground up soybean. Simple soy man, like that. This is not a simple process. No, it is not a simple process. I mean, it's basic, but it's not simple. Sure. So we're spinning out, and what's coming out on this side is the soy milk. Soy milk. Okay. Right. Just like you would buy in the store. Okay. So what we're going to do now is just basically get the foam off the top. And this is kind of a delicate uh, part, would you say, in the in the execution of the final product? It is. I mean, you. You can, you can control the uh, texture and the firmness of the tofu by how gentle you, you stir the soy milk or how quickly and aggressively you stir, stir the soy milk. Sure. We try to be a little bit more aggressive with it because we are trying to get a firmer product. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is stir the soy milk. We can add the uh, nigari to it, which is the uh, minerals that are in seawater without the sodium chloride. Okay. I like getting a real nice vortex. Yeah. So you can almost see to the bottom. Right. And then you uh, want the nigari to splatter. You want it to splatter. So it's like atomizing it. Yep. So the higher up we can go, the more it gets distributed around the milk. Would you make better tofu if you were taller? Well, maybe. And then what we want to do is just let that sit for uh, a few minutes. Okay. Would you feel comfortable saying that you are Milwaukee's mom and pop tofu shop? Yes. Okay. Awesome. I would be pretty comfortable saying we're Wisconsin. Yeah. I like mom that. Mom and pop tofu shop. How many other tofu producers are there in the state? Um, none that I know of. None that you know of. So how long do you have to let it sit covered? That's long enough. That's long enough. All right. Yeah. Let's see. So what now this what we're going to do is we're going to add the second amount of nagari. Okay. Now you're going to see that we're getting a little more separation. Yeah and you're actually able to see the curds now. Right. But this is this is actually a pretty quick process. I mean, yes. like, start yes. to finish maybe I mean, seven, eight minutes. Right, I mean, what we do 
I mean, our batch time is between 20 and 21 minutes. Okay. Keep in mind, we have three batches three going batches. simultaneously. Sure. So it's about it's about an hour. Okay. From the grind okay. to this. Okay. Uh, and then the pressing is another 20 minutes. So you're looking at about an hour and a half, maybe two hours from the actual grinding to where it's going into the cooling. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna ladle the liquid off the way and get down to where we just have the curds so we can put those into the pressing box. The nice thing is actually uh, you can drink the whey. It's kind of like the original Gatorade. Really? Yes. Uh, they would, uh, most, a lot of tofu makers will drink it because of the fact that, again, it has all the minerals from seawater in it, except for the salt. So... Can I taste some? Um, sure. Sweet. I mean, it, it, it kind of has that characteristic, like, nutty, earthy smell. It's warm. It's actually really good. It kind of also has, like, a, a almost an oatmeal-y flavor. Does All anybody right. around here ever end up drinking the uh, tofu whey, or am I like the first one? I'm like the first one. Well, yeah. wow. <laughs> let's, let's just say it's not on our regular menu. It's not on your regular menu. All right, so what we're doing now is we're putting the curds into the pressing boxes. Yeah. And uh, this batch is probably going to be a little bit firmer than uh, what we've been getting today. Sure. All right, so now we put the uh, the cloth over the product, and what we're going to do now is apply pressure. These are uh, air-operated presses. Okay. You'll see when I uh, when we actuate the press, yep. the uh, liquid will start to come out the sides. Wow. And that's pressing it to uh, form it into blocks. That's a lot of water. All right. So that's what the uh, pressing will do to it. It's got wow. a little bit of uh, bounce to it. And then what we do, flip it, is we flip it, hopefully yeah. without dropping it on the floor. Right. And, and that is what we're crazy. doing today is we're cutting it into strips. Sure. Because our packaging, uh, it's easier for Andrew to uh, figure out how much he needs sure. in order to make up one pound pack. All right, so then it's just gonna go in the cooling tank. Yep. And uh, we have actually four batches in here at a time. So sure. basically about an hour in the cooling tank and then it's ready to go into packages. So Andrew definitely has his work cut out for him. I mean, this is the way that you would make it at home, but probably on a little bit smaller scale. You know, it's always the, the, the old saying, you know, I mean, homemade bread is better than bakery right. bread, right. you know. Uh, homemade tofu is better than store-bought. Sure. Ours is the closest to homemade that you can get. Yeah, so it's that nuance. Right. It's that nuance. So this is the final product. Yes, this is it, it is. Right here. Beautiful block of firm tofu. What are these? Those are our herb tofu. Okay. And what we do is we actually blend spices into the soy milk when we're making the tofu. So instead of being a bland little cube of soybeans, it actually has flavor all the way through it. Can I taste it? Sure. What's Give it this a try. One? That one is our herb baked herb food. Nice. It's basically Italian flavored. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of oregano in this one. It's really nice. That little bit of crust yep. really lends itself texturally to uh, being delicious. Do you mind if I cut the block? Give it a shot. Okay, great. I'm gonna give it a taste. All right. Here's to the simple soy man and Barb and RJ. Thanks a lot. Soft, delicate. I love it. Fresh. Uh huh. Yeah, I mean it's really nice. You know, the soybeans are Wisconsin. We're Wisconsin. Uh, we sell in Wisconsin stores. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you, you can't get more, I guess, Wisconsin than that. This is truly a unique experience. I am so excited to tell the story through the food uh, and this beautiful, simple soy man tofu. Thanks a lot. All right. Well, thank you for coming. My pleasure. So we left RJ and Barbara in Milwaukee and we're driving back to the Driftless. I'm really struck with this idea that, that water is an essential ingredient in that tofu making process. They spoke with such fervor and passion about the water that goes into that input. And 
As we're driving home, I'm thinking about how to play with this and, and make it something that's uniquely Wisconsin. We're gonna stop at my favorite watercress patch and I'm gonna take a little bit out because I think that this could be a really compelling ingredient in telling the story of water. One of the really unique features of Vernon County and the Driftless region in general is geology. And that dictates that a lot of fresh water is moving through these hills. It comes out at random intervals and, and really creates a, an interesting place to be able to come in and harvest this watercress, which is just beautiful. One of the things that's really important when you're harvesting or wild foraging is making sure that you're leaving enough of the root base there to continue the biological process. I think a good rule of thumb for foraging is make sure you never actually take more than a third of what's in front of you. So this watercress is really light and peppery in flavor. Uh, I think it's really gonna accent the dish nicely, but I think this is one of the really, really unique pieces of being able to cook and live in the Driftless region. And I used to grow up eating a watercress and cream cheese sandwiches. Y'all ever had those? It's really good. So we're back at the cafe, and we're ready to start putting together the ingredients that we have in front of us. Uh, we have the, the simple soy man tofu, we have the watercress, we have some David Miles nasturtiums, we have some cabbage and parsnips from Driftless Organics, we have an onion from Handsome Dan, and a little bit of ginger. We're gonna take this uh, tofu block here that we got from RJ and Barb at Simple Soy Man, and we're actually gonna slice it, because ultimately, I want my pieces to be about this size and give it a quick press on the cutting board, and we can see that water is already starting to come out of this. One of the things I like to do is take pieces this size and actually freeze them. By putting them in a really cold environment, what we're doing is we're growing ice crystals on the inside, and that actually punctures the cell walls and allows the moisture to leave the product before we actually work with it. Let's take a moment to just prep the rest of our vegetables. And we can see, even just from pulling this out of the freezer, that there's moisture sitting on top. By pressing on it, we're gonna express more water out of this, which is awesome. Now, for frying, I want this to be in just a little bit bigger than bite-sized segments. Now we're gonna take our marinade. This is really simply just shoyu. Shoyu is a naturally fermented soy sauce. So we like it because it has just a little bit more flavor than traditional soy, but it still has that really umami, salty flavor. And that really picks up nicely in the tofu. All right, I'm gonna turn this saute pan up to about a medium, medium high heat. And I'm gonna add just a touch of canola olive oil blend. We're gonna take and just add that quickly. Now over here, I have a little bit of oil that's been heated up to 380 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're gonna take this marinated tofu, we're gonna quickly dredge it in just a little bit of cornstarch. And the reason I like cornstarch is it gives it a really awesome crunch on the outside. So because this oil is nice and hot, we can ensure that this tofu isn't sticking. We can see that the outside is already getting a really nice golden brown crust. That's exactly what we're looking for in this dish. Not many people think of us as a, as a tofu producing state, but one of the things that's awesome about this tofu is it's all Wisconsin. All right, so we're pulling the tofu out. I'm looking for that nice golden brown texture and we can see where the outside of this starts to set. Flipping the cabbage. Flipping the cabbage. Flipping the cabbage. We're gonna take a parsnip and really quickly, just run it right down the side. We're gonna pick this up and we're gonna take it over to our hot oil and give it a quick fry. We can start to see the edges golden up. And you know, one of the things that I love actually about frying parsnips like this into chips is they release one of their essential oils that always reminds me a little bit of vanilla. We're gonna season these with just a little bit of salt black pepper and you can hear them super crispy in the bowl 
That crunch is exactly what we want. And we're gonna come in with a little bit of this vegetable saute first. Next, the star of the show, our tofu. In an homage to clean water, that's really important in the tofu making process. I wanna make sure that this really gets reflected. So we're gonna put down a couple pieces of watercress. I definitely believe that you eat with your eyes first, so I wanna put as many colors on a plate as I possibly can. For any of you at home who haven't tried a nasturtium, they're delicious. They're spicy, sweet. This is sesame seed. So again, one more layer of crunch. We have a little bit of a smoked paprika oil. All right, here it is. This is our dish. This started with the love and care of Chris Jaworski's soybeans, was carried down into Milwaukee with RJ and Barbara at Simple Soyman, and then brought to the west part of the state, where we accented it with a little bit of Driftless Love, and some of these parsnips, and cabbage, and the watercress, to culminate in this, something that you can make at home too. This is the Wisconsin identity on a plate. Hi. Hey, Barbara. Yes. Welcome. That's your line. <laughs> hey, Adam, come in. Welcome hey. to Simple Soyman. Look, <laughs> yeah. He did bottle earlier, so. Yeah. <laughs> so All good. right, these are the outtakes. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Adam, <laughs> at least I didn't welcome you in from the outside, but welcome. Hey, shoot. I'm driving in the Sherman Park neighborhood today, avoiding potholes at all possible costs, so that my boy Sher Norm Nelson, <laughs> Sherman Norman Nelson, can get this shot. Do it. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Wisconsin Foodie would like to thank the following underwriters for their support. The dairy farmers of Wisconsin are proud to underwrite Wisconsin Foodie and remind you that in Wisconsin, we dream in cheese. Just look for our badge. It's on everything we make. Employee-owned Nugler's Brewing Company has been brewing and bottling beer for their friends only in Wisconsin since 1993. Just a short drive from Madison, come visit Swiss Wisconsin and see where your beer's made. Milwaukee's landmark Art Deco Hotel offers luxury accommodations, legendary hospitality, and world-class dining. Paired with the hotel's Roaring Twenties vibe makes the Ambassador a must-experience destination. From production to processing, right down to our plates, there are over 15,000 employers in Wisconsin with career opportunities to fulfill your dreams and feed the world. Hungry for more? Shape your career with these companies and others at fabwisconsin.com. Society Insurance, small details, big difference. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. The Central Wisconsin Craft Collective. Something special from Wisconsin, Hilling Company. Edible Milwaukee Magazine. Also, with support of the Friends of Wisconsin Public Television. For more information about upcoming Wisconsin Foodie special events, dinners, and tours, please go to wisconsinfoodie.com. There you can sign up for our mailing list to be the first to know about our events and offerings. Also, get connected with us through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.